where you sit on a plane can make all the difference between a great Yay! flight and a bad Yay! flight. Unless you are paying for upgraded seats like first class or business class, you want to be very intentional when choosing your seat. Today, I'm going to share with you a great process you can use when selecting seats so you don't end up with the worst seat on the plane. Let's go. First, let's eliminate the obvious seats that no one wants. Those dreaded middle seats and the seats right in front of the lavatories, especially those aisle seats right by the bathrooms. Oh man, I got stuck there one time when I was flying on a super cheap ticket and I couldn't choose my seats. It was a red eye and I had so many people leaning against my seat or knocking my seat throughout the flight. It was the worst. The next step in this process is deciding what is the most important to you during the flight. Is it leg room? Is it access to the lavatory? Maybe a window view? Or the ability to work on your laptop or tablet? Obviously, these priorities are going to be different depending on the length of the flight and the purpose of your flight. If you're on a 10 to 15 hour flight for your dream trip to Greece, your choice might be very different than if you are only flying a couple of hours for a business meeting or a visit with some family. You know, you gotta go see grandma every once in a while. Once you've answered that question, you can eliminate the seats that obviously won't work for you. If you want a window view, you're not going to want an aisle seat. If you have a small bladder, you should not choose a window seat and instead opt for an aisle seat. And if you want to work during the flight on your laptop or tablet, an aisle seat is probably Probably going to be a better choice for you since you'll have all that extra elbow space. Now let's talk about some not as obvious seats you want to avoid, starting with the exit row seats. All that extra leg room sounds grand, but it comes at a cost. And I'm not just talking financially because the exit row has to stay clear during a flight you can't store your personal item under the seat in front of you. It will have to go in the overhead bin, which means you're going to have to be getting up and down to get anything you may want during the flight. Also, the seats might be a titch smaller because the tray table is actually embedded in the armrest instead of on the seat back in front of you. And of course, you have to agree to help in the case of an emergency. And I think some flights, you're not allowed to drink alcohol if you're sitting in the exit row too. So if that's a concern for you, keep that in mind. This same situation applies to what are known as the bulkhead seats, which are the first row of seats that are behind any partition. Usually they're behind the wall of the first class or business class seating or potentially behind the wall of a lavatory. These seats do usually have a lot more leg room but no place for your personal item. And again, slightly smaller seats, which don't all the seats feel so small these days. I swear every time I got on a plane, the seat is even smaller than it was last time. Tiny airplane seats. The next seats to avoid, especially on any flight that you might want to try to sleep on, are ones that don't recline. Any seat in front of a partition will generally not recline. Again, those are usually in front of the lavatory or a partition dividing the larger airlines. Like if you're on a big flight, they might have some partitions that are dividing different sections of the plane. And those seats are gonna be right in front of that wall. They are not going to recline. And by now you should be getting the gist about how there is nothing good about seats around a lavatory, unless you have a really weak bladder. Also, usually the seats in front of the exit rows don't recline either to ensure that that exit row will remain clear during the flight. Moving on, it's time to figure out which part of the plane you want to sit in, the front, the middle, or the back. The obvious pros for sitting towards the front of the plane is that you will be one of the first to get off of the plane. If you have a tight connection or you're just someone who needs to be able to get off of the plane quickly, then sitting near the front is going to be your best choice. The downsides to sitting in the front of the plane are that it does fill up the quickest 
and you'll be less likely to have empty seats beside you. Also, the front of the plane does tend to be a little bit cooler than the rest of the plane. And I know I'm saying that like that's not a great thing, but for those of us who are going through menopause and having hot flashes, it's it may not be such a bad thing. It might actually be quite positive, in fact. <laughs> As for the middle part of the plane, this is gonna have the most stability and the least amount of turbulence. So if you are a nervous flyer, this would probably be a great option for you. The con to sitting in the middle area, especially if you want to enjoy the views while you're flying, is that you're usually sitting over the wing, so you might not get to see as much. You'll see a lot of wing and a lot of jet engines, but maybe not as much of the scenery. It does tend to also be the noisiest part of the plane because of those jet engines. And finally, the rear of the plane is a great place to sit if you're hoping to have an empty seat or two next to you. As the plane tends to fill up from front to back, there are usually less people choosing seats in the back. You'll also be closer to the lavatory, which again, as we've discussed, can be a pro or a con, depending on how much closer to the lavatory you are. On the downside, the back of the plane does tend to move around a bit more and uh, can, you know, if you're a nervous flyer, can make you, you know, maybe even more nervous. <laughs> and that last row before the lavatory does not recline. And finally, the last con of sitting in the back is that the flight attendants do tend to congregate in the back, especially during those longer flights, and they can be a little chatty. So if you're trying to sleep on the plane in the back of the plane, uh, yeah, that might be an issue as well. You'll definitely need those noise counseling headphones. <laughs> By now, I am sure you have all heard about the seat hack, where if you're flying with two people, one of you chooses an aisle seat and one of you chooses a window seat, and you hope <laughs> that that middle seat stays empty. Ironically, I've done this multiple times when I'm flying with other people, and I've had more luck getting an empty middle seat when I've been flying solo than I have when I try to do that trick flying with somebody else. But another hack that I have heard, but I'm not sure if I want to risk trying out, is choosing a middle seat towards the back of the plane and hoping that no one wants to pick a seat where they're already having to sit next to someone in a middle seat. The trick here is to make sure to check as your flight gets closer and to see if someone or two someones have chosen seats around you. And then you will probably want to go back and change your seat option at that time. A fantastic free tool to use to find your best seat on your particular flight is SeatGuru.com. You'll just put in the airline, the date of your flight, and your flight number, and it will populate a map of the plane and information on all the seats. Now, sometimes if your flight is still a ways out, they may not have the information for your flight yet, but just continue to check back with SeatGuru as your flight gets closer. And the last decision you'll need to consider is whether you wanna be on the left side of the plane or the right side of the plane. Meaning when you are seated in the plane, are you to your left or to your right looking towards the cockpit? If you are planning on working during your flight and you're gonna be using your computer or tablet, you'll probably want to choose an aisle seat as I mentioned before, and you'll wanna choose an aisle seat that is opposite of your dominant hand. Since I am right-handed, I would want to choose a left side aisle seat so my right elbow would have more room to move around. Also, if you know that you're going to be flying over or past some interesting viewpoints that you could possibly see from the plane, you might want to do some research to see what side of the plane you should sit on to see those sites. When I fly into Portland, I know that Mount Hood is going to be on the left hand side. So I will always choose a left side window seat when I'm flying to Portland so that I can see Mount Hood when we are coming in to land. And finally, if you want to choose a window seat because you are hoping to sleep on that plane and you want that wall to lean up against, then you should choose the side of the plane based on how you want your head to rest while you're sleeping. So if you're a right side sleeper, you wanna choose the right side. And if you're a left side sleeper, choose the left. This video here has some more travel tips on how to get better rest or maybe even be able to sleep on the plane.